right, guys. Happy Thursday. We are almost to February 14th, which is great. That means February will be almost over, which means warmer weather coming, coming, coming. Anyway, um, I wanted to make sure that everyone is following me on Instagram. I posted a lot yesterday, which I do post a lot, I think, but um, I did my whole entire diet from as soon as I woke up to at nighttime, and I don't normally ever do that. So, um, And I saved it under my uh, story highlights, and it's called The Food Diary. And I posted because I get a lot of questions. What do you eat? What's the right thing? When do you eat? I eat cert- I eat different things before I work out and after I work out on certain workouts. It all changes for me. So I wanted to post and share with you guys. And um, it is there. I don't really do Facebook that much, but it's on the Instagram story highlights under food diary. So check that out if you have any questions about food and nutrition. Anyway, so today I wanted to talk about the power of forgiveness and how it can affect us mentally and physically. It can affect our bodies and our brains. One of my favorite quotes is something I found on Instagram a long time ago, and it said, I had to make you uncomfortable, otherwise you would never have moved. And it says, from the universe. (laughs) This hits home to me on so many different levels. Studies have shown that Bitter people or people that hold grudges have higher blood pressure, more likely to die from heart disease than more forgiving people. When we hold grudges, we release a chemical of a stress response. It can damage our mood. It has also been said that unforgiveness can cause nightmares, insomnia, angry outbursts, emotional numbness, and physical tension. When you don't forgive, you see the world through a lens of hostility, resentment, anger, and sadness. All right, so this is, we're just going to get down into it on why we should forgive. We have all been there, either in relationships or with family and friends. Some way or another, we have been hurt, or we are the one that's causing the pain to someone that we really care about. Either way, I've been on both ends, and they're both awful feelings. Bottom line is we are human, is what we all need to accept. We have all made mistakes. We have all sinned. It is not our job to judge our sins against another person's sins. No one is perfect. When we make a mistake, we accept other, We expect others to forgive us easily. But when someone else makes a mistake, we, we pick apart every single detail, which is not a good way to live, but we, you know, it's really easy to do that. I know for my, my, myself, I am 100% a people pleaser. I'm an empathetic person, which means I absolutely despise when I make a mistake or if I hurt someone. I overanalyze it. I over apologize. I do whatever I can to make it right. I feel completely helpless, and I want to mix. I want to fix it immediately. And when I have hurt someone, I truly feel it in the bottom of my soul, like it affects the whole day for me. What I've learned about myself through just self-discovery is I need to give people time to process it. Like my time isn't better than their time, which is honestly taking my ego out of it. We are all different. And when we think and forget, we all think and forgive differently. I have to work on not being selfish in the forgiving process. I know that I cannot expect them to process it the way I process it. It's just not going to happen. I have learned not to be so hard on someone. I have learned to communicate it with them instead of ghosting them out, which is really easy to do. You just, you know, block them or you just get them out of your mind, get them out of your head, go to places that they're not going to be there. I think a lot of people do that and nothing, no growth happens, nothing changes. You know, you're just stuck in that rat hole. So I have learned to communicate it with the people that I have problems with, which is the hard part, confrontation for me. I do know that I do not want to be known as an ice princess. This is like the worst thing I think someone could be is, you know, she's just labeled as an ice princess, which means they have no feeling, no emotion, and, you know, basically just the B word, like not a nice person. Psychologists say that the real meaning of forgiveness is when the person makes a conscious, deliberate decision to release feelings of resentment toward a person that has harmed you, regardless of whether or not they deserved it. Okay, let's first talk about the benefits of forgiveness. So why we should forgive. You have healthier relationships, you have better mental health, less anxiety and stress, lower blood pressure, fewer symptoms of depression, a stronger immune system, improved heart health, and improved your self-esteem. 
So if we know all the benefits of forgiving, then why is it so hard? The reason is because if you've been hurt, you have attached an emotion to it. You either feel like they do not deserve your forgiveness or you want revenge on them. When we hold grudges against someone, it is usually our attempt to punish them. This makes us feel in power over them. But sometimes that punishment can only hurt us because a person isn't aware that they have offended you. In reality, the other person has moved on with their life and you're the only one holding the ugly burden of a grudge. It gets stuck in your memory. The situation that made you upset or hurt you gets stuck in your memory. And you usually cannot forget the situation that hurt you or the person that hurt you. And you relate the situation to the emotion of being hurt. So it's all about being in our subconscious brain. When you forgive, you are not saying that you weren't hurt or that you will forget that hurt. But with time, that hurt will fade and you will feel the release when you forgive. Here are some tips for getting better at forgiveness. So if you're like, okay, so yeah, I know I want to forgive, but what the heck does that look like? Some tips. Acknowledge your part, right? That's called being open-minded, not closed-minded. So putting yourself in someone else's shoes. Break the thought habit. So when you go back in your brain, like you're alone and you go back and you think about the event or the situation or the person that hurt you, you're in control of that thought. So break the thought habit. Think about something else that makes you happy. Allow yourself time to heal. So time, you know, is our biggest, best asset. You know, it will cure. It will heal everything. Invest in good relationships. Try to understand the person's side. Use empathy. So you can use empathy. That can be a good thing. Or sometimes, like, my side is just way too empathetic. Accept the disappointment as part of life and move on. That's, that's the hard part is just accept it. It is what it is, you know, and start living in the present. Real forgiveness comes from shutting out our ego. And I really believe this. I had to work hard on this. Ego is simply the opposite of love. It is the false self, the part of you that reacts to the pain and the hurt. It masks the true self, the highest version of yourself, your spirit. Ego is fueled by fear. It makes us seek validation in the hurt. It makes us think playing a victim is normal. It makes us think everyone needs to hear our opinion or our side of the story. The ego is all about I and me. So once you identify your ego, which is what I've had to do this past year, you get down to like your real core self and um, it's really humbling to see and it's a great place to live from because you're not, you're not a fake person and you are an open-minded person and you're feeling all the feelings that you should be feeling, but you're in control of the feelings. It's a really good place to be. Once you learn to detach yourself from all of that, so that's what I had to learn is detach from my ego you will see light at the end of the tunnel. And the way you saw that person that hurt you will change. You will be more open-minded to their thought pattern, which will make you more empathetic and more forgiving. So that's you putting yourself in their shoes. This works in any situation in every day of your life. A lot of people are closed-minded people, which is their ego-driven. They are, I am always the right, or the know-it-all person. I tell my son, no one likes to know it all. And then he's like, well, mom, what if I know it all? (laughs) Anyway, um, no one likes that. You always want to be open-minded and, you know, we don't know it all. It is really hard for them to see both sides. And that is not our job to get them to see your side. We need to stay in our lane and do whatever we can do to not carry that burden of forgiveness. So basically, it's not our job to say you're wrong. They have to figure it out on their own. We stay in our lane and just work as much as we can with ourselves. So hopefully this made you see that you play a big part of this too. Like if you've been wronged, it doesn't matter. Like you have to do the work on forgiving. So it's not just, oh, that person wronged me. They're going to, you know, they're going to have to make me feel better. They're not. They're not ever going to make you feel better. We cannot act like a victim, which is huge. No one wants a victim. No one wants a poor me. No one wants that. It just makes you look bad. You don't want the ego to run the show. So I made up some steps on how, so you're like, okay, so this is what I need to do. How do, how do we get there? And I've done a lot of research, read a lot of books on this. Um, how do you get better at, at this? 
Here are some tips I have made on how to get rid of the past burdens and not let them accept your present life. So step one, make a list of everything you cannot you cannot want or need to forgive in your life. It can include reasons that you cannot forgive yourself. So maybe yourself is one reason that you need to forgive. These are going to help you. So you write them down. Re- number two, replace the negative thoughts with at least one happy thought of that person. So if it's a person that um, hurts you, there's got to be some type. If it was a relationship, you have to bring back good memories because I'm sure you've had them. So replace the negative memories with the positive memories. And that just changes the brain set, mindset. Step three, immediately replace the negative feelings to feelings of gratitude. So I had to do this yesterday. I had a crappy day. It was like 30 degrees. I think it snowed at one point, rained at one. I mean, just a bad, and I'm a very big weather person. I'm a water person. So that means like if it's sunny, I'm happy basically. And I did not see the sun. I don't think we saw the sun for like three or four days. Um, And I was sick. I had to go to the doctor. I had the kids. I had to run them around. And all you want to do is lay in bed and let someone take care of you, right? And that it was just not possible for me. I had to like keep moving, keep going on for the kids. And um, I could, could have gotten in like a really crappy feeling, like a negative mindset, made my kids have a really bad night. But I didn't. I didn't let myself do that because I focused on the gratitude, which is my son can't sit close enough to me at dinner or my daughter is always has a smile on her face and is always on her hands doing handstands or cartwheels or anything. She just loves life. So I wanted to see life in their eyes. And I did see that. And I was just grateful. And you, it is a proven fact that when you are in a grateful mindset, you cannot be in a crappy mindset. You cannot be negative. You cannot be in a bad mood. It just completely changes you. And I like want people to understand that because it's, it has helped me out tremendously. So number four, pray. So yes, I pray. I'm extremely, extremely close to God. But what I have learned this year is, or last year, 2019, pray for the other person. So the person that hurts you, pray for them. Like ask God to heal their heart or ask God to see your side or um, lift, ask God to lift their heart up and talk to them like he is a human. Talk to God like he's a human. That's what I do. Tell him what is bothering you and ask for help on how to forgive. (coughs) Sorry. Step five. Do not speak poorly. This is a big one. Do not speak poorly of the person that offended you. It is not your story to tell what the person did to the whole, to your whole social circle, to the person at the grocery store, to the person at Target. It's not your story. So, that will only lead to bitterness and resentment. That only makes you look bad. That is not to say you can't talk to your close friends group. You should have a close friends group. But the focus should be more about your feelings and your actions, not about the other person's feelings, actions, and how they made you, or how, how they hurt you, and how wrong they are. That only makes you look bad, and it only leads um, bitterness in your head, and you're in charge of all that. Step six don't celebrate their failures, which is really easy to do. You know, if you break up with someone and they're not doing well, you're like, ha ha, look at your life without me. And um, all that does is make you look worse, make you feel worse. Like you, we should honestly, at the end of the day, you want that other person happy. You want to be truly happy. So just live out of love and not the ego, which is the fear. And this doesn't happen overnight. It takes years. Step seven, treat them the way you want to be treated. And this goes with the saying that I always tell my kids, um, if you have nothing nice to say, don't say it at all. Don't dwell on the hurt. If you spend time reliving the hurt over and over, you are call, it's called dwelling and you're in control of that. So accept that you will probably never forget the hurt, but dwelling in your own brain causes toxic- toxicity in your personal life. So just remember that. If you keep reliving the pain and the hurt and everything that that person did to you, it's only causing you pain because they're not doing that. They're over it and they're way above and beyond it. It's you that's doing it. So no matter what, if they're super wrong in this situation, 
doesn't matter. Control your, your feelings. How do you get over it for you personally? Number eight, forgiveness is a clear demand. This is probably the most important. We have to forgive because God forgave us, not for any other reason. Not because the person that hurt you apologized or that you, they supposedly changed and they want you back or they promised they will never do it again. We have been forgiven so much and our call is to forgive. When you forgive, you release the tie the person has, on the, has or the situation has on you. It is freeing you to live in the present moment. So just remember that. Like, why, If you're saying, oh, that's so wrong what this person did, but what would God do? God would forgive them. Remember? Like I, I wrote it in one of my Instagram posts. Um, God wants you to forgive over 77 times, like over and over and over. You forgive. It's not the easiest thing to do at all. It's probably one of the hardest things to do. But I think just look at the big picture. The end of the day, what do you want out of life? You know, do you want to live in a bitter world, negativity world, toxicity world, and just relive those moments, or do you want to live in love and light and you know wish that other person the best and pray for that person because that's how God wants us to live. Anyway. So those are my steps. You can, they'll be in the show notes. You can write them down. Hopefully they will help you. I did read a book, um, The Power of Letting Go. Really, really good book. I suggest it if you're having issues of letting situations go or a person let them go. A book I brought today is Own Your Every Day. Um, <clears throat> overcome the pressure to prove and show up for what you were made to do. So the book is about, does it ever seem like you still have to find your purpose or that you're stuck with unfigured out dreams? Do you feel the pressure to prove yourself or worry about what others think? You are not the only one. So this is a great book, Own Your Every Day. It was a really easy read. Um, and just, just another example that you're in control you have all of this down, um, and you just need the tools to help you maybe get over it or maybe feel like you're in control, you know? Because if you feel like you're spinning around, you need an anchor. And your anchor, in my opinion, should be God. But anything, you have to anchor down. You have to ground down. And once you're grounded, once you're anchored, like, you can take anything at you, and you got it. Anyway, I hope that helps you guys. Let me know with your messages on Instagram or Facebook and please share it to everyone and I appreciate you guys I had a crappy day yesterday and I posted about it which I hardly ever do and like everybody lifted me up so my day is amazing today because of you guys thank you so much have a great day mm -hmm.